Now I, we are standing now at the Henneon Art Center, where we tonight are opening the Ilya Kabakov exhibition, the first retrospective painting exhibition by Kabakov ever, and it's a collaborative project together with the Sprengel Museum Hannover. All these things we do collaboratively, which is very important, I think. And uh, Kabakov is not a new name to Norway. He, we made big exhibition with him in the 90s, and we are very proud now that we can do it once more, and at Hövikotten this time, in Neonstad. Uh, and we are happy that Rob Storr is here to explain some of the works on this video. So, um, what more to say? I'm happy and I wish the exhibition good luck. But he's, like, he's a lot like Gerhard Richter uh, in the following way. He's somebody who came out of the East, out of a culture of isolation, a culture cut off from modernist ideas, and he had to make everything up for himself. He was very, very skeptical of the official government views, but he was also very, very skeptical of a lot of things that were taken for granted in the West. So he's looked at all of these propositions about how life must be, should be, will be, and scratched his head and asked leading questions, all of which basically undo the certainties with which we live. This one is called uh, Answers, which is answers to questions. And the reason I think that it's useful to look at for starters is because it uses all the elements that he uses. It uses actual objects, appropriated objects, like Dada objects, and it uses text and it uses emptiness. And in Kabakov's work, emptiness is always a very important thing because it suggests what we don't know about the world. It suggests the emptiness that we feel in the world inner emptiness as well as external isolation. And so you have a series of very concrete things and a series of metaphysical things that you can't put your hands on. And then it has things that are maybe poetic and then things that are totally anti-poetic because the questions are all banal questions. Who, who's, whose object is this? Who put this nail here? Uh, why did so-and-so clean up the shelf? And all of these are sort of the banalities of everyday life mixed in with this kind of longing for a transcendence, a longing for some kind of uh, way of getting beyond ordinary mundane life. And that's what Kabakov is about. And why, why he's so important really is that his experience of this comes out of the Soviet Union, out of a particular time and place, but it is actually uh, a, an attempt to make a, a big kind of poetic and metaphysical painting at a time when there's very little of it being done by anybody. He has this kind of love-hate relationship with French painting, and he has a love-hate relationship with Soviet painting, and he puts the two together to make a certain kind of painting which nobody's ever seen before, uh, which comment on both experiences and which also create a kind of new imaginative space. But I mean, if you look at these paintings, for example, these, these are bleak angles all of this stuff. This comes out of the dynamism of suprematist painting, which was done with abstract shapes. And you see planes passing into, into three-dimensional space on a flat surface. And it was very, very radical modern art of the 19-teens, 20s, 30s. Um, by the time Kabakov gets it, all of the certainties that were associated with that school, where you, you really thought you were going to make a revolution, you really thought you were going to change everything, had been blown to bits, right? And also, he begins to combine utopian forms, which are these pure abstractions, these pure geometries, with totally non-utopian things of one kind, banal scenes, but connected with the social utopia, which was also being promised. And they don't match. So for some people, looking at this picture may you know, seem kind of like a kind of low-key, um, curious thing, you know, and a little bit like genre painting, you know, but actually it's a, quite a radical statement and it's, it, it's a radical statement that questions absolutely everything, modernist utopias and modernist political utopias all at once. Again, questions and answers, those are the pictures, questions and answers, and this, these are all questions and answers or questions without answers. Just better questions. <laughs>